Hey guys, this is Tim from Thomas Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, this video is going to be about this one. Unfortunately, while testing something for my one of my upcoming videos, the uh, YouTube Studio Light Channel 1 died. So, let me turn it on. As you can see, it powers on just fine. Um, but if we compare it to the other channel, there should be a voltage. As you can see, there is none. Even when I turn the knob, or turn this knob, or activate the channel, or disable the channel, there is no voltage on the output. And it was whilst I was testing, well, close to the very extremes of my uh, lip bench power supply. 200 watts which is close to or it's the limit of the, uh, the power supply so I guessing that one of the input fuses burned through so yeah let's actually take the cover of the power supply so we can see uh, inside what's going on now fortunately a, a while ago I redid the the whole assembly mechanism thingy. I 3D printed custom brackets for the corners so that I could uh, easily assemble and disassemble the uh, lap bench power supply without the thing falling apart. So now this of course is the uh, fan control board that controls the fans. So let's disconnect that. Let's zoom in on that fuse. This fuse, especially over here, it, uh, take a look at the other fuse. Over here, that's much cleaner. And this fuse, yeah, it looks absolutely terrible. There you go, that looks way better. Now, there's this little thing at the bottom, and I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there. Turn at the right angle, and hopefully try to get the tracer under there. There you go. What the fuck? Look at this. What is this gunk doing here? What's this? This, this? Look, there's black residue in the oh, fuse holder. What? What's this? Oh, I know one thing for sure. This fuse is gone. I think that this fuse just exploded or something, man. I mean, wow. It is, it's all over the place, this... This gunk. I really don't have... 10 fuses. So, I got to order them. So, I uh, bought new fuses. 15 amps. Uh, total of five fuses and five fuse holders so that's nice we can replace this uh, actually pretty broken look it's, it's all it's I don't think it needed much more to uh, catch fire hey guys this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a little short video in which we are going to have some fun with fuses. Now they just arrived. Uh, let me hopefully pick it up. Um, before I forget, this is the first video that I'm um, creating with the new LED, the new YouTube Studio LED. And uh, please let me know if you like the quality. Uh, ooh! These are different fuses than I thought they would be. 
But please uh, let me know if you like the quality of the, uh, the lightning, if you like the shadow, or if you don't like the shadow. Please also let me know if you like the colors, because I changed a camera setting and maybe that improved uh, the coloring of the videos. I enabled digital cinema colors, whatever that might be. So yeah, please let me know. Uh, these fuses, well, they are, I think they are 15 amps, including fuse holders, which is really nice. I wasn't expecting this to arrive today, but these are replacements for these fuses. Now, they, well, they match exactly, actually. It does not surprise me if they actually uh, buy it from the same seller. So let's grab my lab bench power supply and uh, yeah, install them. I might know what the problem is with the stability. Please take a look at this fuse. It has broken in half. Thumbs up for that. So channel 2 needs some work as well and I'm not sure um, what the size of that capacitor is, but I guess we will figure it out. Now, obviously, it's about channel one. Fuse holders over here, and we need to replace that. And obviously, we need to install a fuse into it. And I'm thinking about how I'm going to do that. Let me know what you think of the, the LED, the new studio light. Do you think that it's a good addition to the yeah to the recording set, or do you think it's uh, worthless? I do think that it's a uh, rather nice addition, and I also think that it improves the quality quite a lot. It's probably connected to the ground plane, and that's why it's taking so long to uh, actually desolder. Get some nice fresh, freshly tinted solder tip. There you go. And that will improve. I'll speed up the process a little. I just whip it off. Well, that's one side. Well, I can probably heat it up over here to get the other side. Like that. There you go. This looks identical. This is exactly the same. Which is really good. So let me get some uh, flux and we'll proceed with uh, soldering this on. I do think that I'm going to use my hot air gun for this one. Because if I melt the fuse holder it might not fit as good as, as it's supposed to fit. Just going to gently heat it up. Oh, it's already scorching. Uh, let's try the soldering iron then. Oh, that actually works out. Oh no, I broke one of the control wires off. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. I'm not sure how you're supposed to solder these things. I don't think that you're even supposed to solder them. I think that you're supposed to reflow them. I think it's time for the fuse to go in. And after that, we'll test channel one to see if it's finally working again. And if we succeeded in 
soldering and new fuse holder. I'm still amazed by the fact that the whole fuse holder went kaboom. And I think that the fuse basically just imploded or something. I mean, wow. The fuse looked really bad. And the fuse holder also looked really bad. So let's insert the fuse into its socket. Like so. Ah, it fits. That's uh, really good. Um, let me grab a power cord so we can test it out. There you go. It turns on. Now the question is, will channel 1 turn on? There you go. Yes. We've got a reading. Which means... It's working. Cool. Well, that's uh, really nice. Let's turn it off. And let's mount the channel back in its position. So we can call this fix success. And we still need to check the other channel because I think it's one of the uh, input capacitors uh, just cracked and that's not good it uh, can cause short circuits and may cause damage to uh, the power supply and that's probably because I over tightened one of the screws which is a bit stupid oh well I do think I've got one of these um, LTC uh, 3780 boards laying around, uh, a dead one obviously, but I need to find a dead board, I'm not sure where it even is. So it's not as big as uh, the ones that are currently on the PCB, but I think that this will be a good replacement. So let's uh, unsolder that. And install it onto the PCB. So, the soldering iron has heated up again. Let's So, all right, this seems to, uh, to look good. Let's add some really awkward angle. Add some solder to the pads. And this is going to be even more awkward. The capacitor has been soldered on. Is channel 1 working? Well, let's find it out. Let's connect it. And let's turn it on. Channel 1 is at well, max voltage. Let's not do that. Let's do something like this. Here we go. Yeah, everything is working. So, I'd say a uh, massive thumbs up for uh, this repair. Now my lap bench is finally working again. I did miss the first channel, since the second channel is a little bit inaccurate now and then. So, uh, yeah, well, let's put this uh, back together. And so we can uh, install it again in the lab.
All right, so it's back together. No wires are in the fan. Uh, so let's put it back on the bench and test it out. I see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I see you in the next one.